Hey, my name is Chris Cornthwaite. I founded Roosterbane.com. Today, I want to talk about seven life-changing habits. So seven life-changing habits. I was thinking about this today because we're in January. It's the beginning of another year. Um, but really, I mean, it doesn't have to be a January thing. This can be something you think about at any point in your life. Um, but one thing I've realized with New Year's is that a lot of people make resolutions. And not surprisingly, if you're anything like me, you've made resolutions in the past and they don't actually stick. And the thing that I actually discovered over the last few years is that resolutions suck, I think. Um, but actually, one of the things I realized is that when you want to get to wherever you want to get to in your life, one of the best ways to get there is through habits. And even the smallest changes in habits, even like tiny little incremental shifts, can uh, can radically transform your output in your life. Even something as simple as like journaling every day, for example, for me, has been really transformative in helping me stick to my goals and helping me have kind of a long-term view for where I want to go. So these are seven habits that I want to challenge you to adopt. Habit number one, set a daily social media time. Now, this might seem like I'm telling you to set a blocker on your social media. Actually, I want you to set an appropriate social media time. So let me explain. So for example, I create a lot of content on social media, and that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing to create content. So if you're somebody who doesn't actually create content, doesn't actually engage with people on social media, you might actually need to do more on social media. Now, if you're somebody who just scrolls Twitter for hours on end and kind of gets depressed and scared, then maybe you need to do less. So what I would challenge you for the habit is to actually set a time when you will be on social media, make it a priority to actually create content and engage with other people because that's actually productive, whereas scrolling and getting scared is probably not. And then set that time, do it every day consistently. And if you do that for a year, your followers will grow, your influence will grow. At the same time, if you spend less time scrolling fearfully, you'll actually be in a much better place mentally. So set a daily social media time and make it a habit. Habit number two, create a morning routine. So morning routines are something that I've come to swear by. And really it's because I actually struggle with what's called seasonal affective disorder. So in the winter, in the, in the fall and spring, a little bit, but mostly in the winter, I struggle with like depression, sadness. And one of the things I've found really helps a lot with this is to have a morning routine um, where I do exercise, I do journaling. Um, sometimes I watch like motivational YouTube videos, whatever it is. Um, create a routine for yourself and do it every morning. And don't make like, like if you start off by saying, I'm gonna do two hours of exercise and this like, you're gonna fail. Don't try to do that. Just start with something really small. Just start with like a five minute gratitude journal or something. Start as small as you possibly can and let that be really doable and really easy. And as that becomes a habit, you can add to it until you have kind of a more robust morning routine. But do start it, start a morning routine. Okay, so this one I hope is a little more out of the box. I wanna challenge you to make a habit of connecting with people who are interesting. And it's something that I've started doing and it's actually really cool practice. So for example, when you read an article in a newspaper that you like, I want you to go and find that author on Twitter or LinkedIn and follow them or connect with them and send them a message and say that you enjoyed it. So I will often do this now when I read an article in like Forbes or something, I'll go and connect to the author on LinkedIn. And this is really cool practice for networking, but also for kind of growing your visibility, especially if you're somebody trying to become a thought leader or trying to earn a living online or whatever, or whatever your goals are, um, connecting with the relevant people in that space can help you A, learn from them, but B, slowly become a peer rather than somebody who just consumes content. You can become somebody who is on their level, who's, you know, trading off content or whatever. Habit number four, we are staying with the theme of connecting to people. Make a point to have a conversation with somebody new every month. Every single month, make sure you're having a conversation with somebody new. And it can be somebody who is outside of the realm of what you currently do. It can be somebody you're going to learn from. It can be somebody who interests you. Um, whatever it is, make sure you're actually having a physical, and I don't mean physical in the sense of you have to be there with them, but have a live conversation with somebody. It could be online. And 
just compare notes and, and learn from somebody. Not to try to get a job, not to try to get something from them, just genuinely taking the time to learn. It will expand your horizons and in a weirdly backwards way, it will also help your career too because the amount of things you can learn from talking to people in other industries are just phenomenal. That's like the point of life is to be learning. So try that. Try meeting one new person every month. And if you're ambitious, like me, I do one new person every week. So whatever, however you want to work it out, but make it a habit and start. Okay, habit number five, do one thing every week that could change everything. I really love this advice. I don't know where I came up with it. It's, it's been in my head for a few years now, but there are things that we do every day that are monotonous, that are cyclical, that are not going anywhere. But there are things that we can choose to do in the course of a week that could radically transform our life. So this could be like pitching an article. It could be maybe you're a writer and you want to try to try to pitch a book or maybe writing a chapter of a book if you're a writer. It could be um, applying for a dream job. It could be reaching out to a recruiter at like Google if you've always wanted to work at Google. Whatever the thing is, I think it's amazing for our mental health to just choose one thing every week that you know could drastically change your life and bring about the things that you want to see in this world for yourself. Try that and watch what it does. It's amazing. Habit number six, focus on the things that matter. Now this is a really hard thing to do, but one of the things that we do throughout the day is we cram our lives with so much crap. And even if you're at a job, for example, you can be working at a career and you can be doing all these things and you can wear that busyness like a badge of honor. I've been there. I mean, when you wake up in the morning and you've got 50 or 100 or 200 emails in your inbox, it can feel like you're accomplishing a lot. It can feel like you're needed. And I want to encourage you to try to get rid of that ego that comes in when we are trying to be busy and we love to tell people, this is maybe a North American thing especially, but we love to tell people how busy we are. I'm so busy, I'm so busy. And try to get rid of that busyness. And I don't mean that stopping to do the things you need to do, but I mean, I wanna challenge you as a habit to take a look at what you do in a week and recognize that a small percentage of that activity is actually going to be transforming your life. And some of that activity is actually just kind of fill time. I'm guessing that 20% of the things that you do in a day will probably produce 90% of the outcomes that you want to see. So focus on that 20% and try to spend less time in the crap. Number seven, watch your money. So I wanted to include one money habit. And I mean, there's a lot we could say about money, but the one thing I want to encourage you to do a lot of times when I meet people who are in a bad place with money, um, they don't actually look at their money. They don't think about it. It's just something they don't want to acknowledge. So I wanna challenge you, no matter how bad your money is, every week to sit down, look at your bank account, see where it's going, see where it's coming, and just doing that as a habit will help you to start to actually put your money in the forefront of your mind, which is not a bad thing. Even if it's a bad situation when you look at that bank account, having the habit of looking at it will actually begin to transform your finances too because you'll be a lot more cognizant of it rather than just trying to ignore it. Okay, so that's it. Those are seven life-transforming habits. Have you tried them? Let me know. Comment below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Lots more great videos coming your way soon. Check out the website, roosterbane.com, and I will see you next time.